एवरीवन वेलकम टू लिटिल लवर्स चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लुक अप ऑन अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग नॉवल बाय विलियम फॉकनर वाज एन अमेरिकन राइटर नोन फॉर हिज नॉवेल्स एंड शॉर्ट स्टोरीज ही सर्ट एन हिज फिक्शनल प्लेस दैट इज युकना फतवा फॉर कंट्री हिज फेमस वर्क्स और एज आई ले डाइंग 1930 समर एंड फ्यूरी 1929 बिफोर दैट एंड देन सेंचुरीज 1931 and Absalom Absalom a uh, Faulkner won a Nobel prize for literature because for his uh, powerful and artistically unique contributions to the um, uh, modern american novel in the year 1949 his best novel takes us into this darkness not out of cruelty with intent of leaving us there but when the light finally comes and his great work it always does come we realize all the more powerfully how precious the light is and this is the voice now uh, is this a bare small introductions of uh, william faulkner now let's go to the novel the sound and the fury which is published in 1929 very confusing novel which is uh, divided into four part there is a multiple uh narrative techniques and also it contains stream of consciousness in the novel and here it speaks about the downfall of compson family compson family and the story divided into four part that's benjamin seven uh benjamin quentin um and uh, next is jason and later omission narrator next is appendix so here the sound and the fury the title uh what it speaks actually sound you know and the fury means angry angry at real a lot of attention but do nothing useful thing so this title uh, was taken from a famous writer shakespeare's macbeth soliloquy from the act 5 scene 5 that is in the court i court tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow creeps in this pretty pace from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time and all of our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death out out a uh, brief candle lives but a walking shadow a poor player that strands and frets his heart upon the stage and then his heart no more it is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing this is how the quote comes from uh, macbeth and from that we are take uh, william faulkner has taken the title of the novel and it it is like a southern gothic for a uh, modernist novel and uh, author borrowed this title uh, later a uh, story comes under the stream of consciousness and the 1998 modern library ranked this sixth on its uh, list of the 100 best english language novels of the 20th century the themes of the novel are time memory and past and decline and corruptions and you can also see words and languages sin and sexuality race and classes many more a natural and unnatural love among siblings love between the sexes uh, sex and uh, christian love these are the themes we can observe in the novel and the next goes in the initial part i already told you that how the novels are divided um, in the novel they divided the part so in the initial form benjamin who was a uh, uh, an intellectually disabled 33 year old man speaking in april 1928 next in the second part quentin june 2nd 1910 and uh, it speaks about i'll tell you later what are all that speaks next is johnson april 6 1928 he works as a local farm supply store so next is omniscient narration of april 8 1928 here they don't uh, the just stories in the story they uh, speaks about the past 
एट द प्रेजेंट द मिक्स द बोथ द नॉवल्स और बेंजामिन मेन कैरेक्टर ऑल्सो एंड सन ऑफ कॉम्सन क्वेंटीन कॉम्सन जॉसन कॉम्सन फोर्थ एंड कैरी कॉम्सन एंड मिस्टर कॉम्सन ही इज द हेड ऑफ द फैमिली एंड मिसिस क्वेंटीन कॉम्सन हु इज द डॉटर ऑफ कैरी दिलसी गिप्सन who is the most positive character in the book and uh, she is a matriarch of the family of comson servants she is the only one who is stable force in the lives of the comson children who rises and who helps the mrs comson's because the to rise our children and minors or mrs comson luster gibson or the very wealthy family was a old aristocratic southern family from jefferson mississippi After the Civil War, the Compsons declined in wealth, morality, and sanity. Jocelyn III is a philosophical but ineffective alcoholic, and Coralie uh, is a self-obsessed hypo- hypochondriac. Uh, and their children have a host of problems. The central tension of the story involves the three brothers' individual obsessions with candy. So these all stories, all the brothers is around surround this. Uh, girl is candy the first section occurs the benjamin uh, benjamin's 33rd birthday day before easter benji and his teenage the black caretaker luster who is the daughter of uh, uh, dilsey and hag her own the golf course and friends don't worry i'll just, just display the characters names and all uh, many more informations in the videos so please go through the video uh so you can take a many more inf- informations apart from whatever i say speak in the uh, this video so benjamin in his past including the death of his grandmother who nobody cares but only the candy uh, react to the death of the uh, grandmother so benjamin attacks attack on a passing school girl candy first kissing a boy and first wearing perfume in her wedding Benji attacked Candy's uh, a boyfriend who was kissing the Candy that is in the past and present uh, he also attacks a man who is kissing Mrs Quentin who is a niece of Benji and uh, who is uh, tying a red tie uh, Lester then takes uh, Benji to home for dinner where his brother Jason scones him but dilsi who is a servant of the campson's family treats him kindly that is in a first section in the second section regarding this queen queen who is a very intelligent man who is preparing to leave for the harvard for his study uh, mr campson sells a large portions of the family land to provide the funds for the tuition carrie loses uh, her virginity and becomes pregnant she involves in carry involves in promiscuity it means uh, who is involving sexual with many people so uh, she is unable to uh, unwilling to name the father of the child because she got pregnant now carry uh, is a pregnant in the second section though it is likely dalton amis a boy from town but uh, carry didn't uh, reveal this anywhere Caddy's pregnancy leaves Quentin emotionally shattered because uh, he is a brother and he holds responsibility he attempts to claim a false responsibility for the pregnancy lying to his father that he and Candy have committed incest it means involving a sex sex mr compson is indifferent to candy's promiscuity uh, dismissing the uh, quentin's story and telling his son to leave early for the north east so attempting to cover up her indiscretions quentin is horrified by hearing the blame and he wants to uh, hearing blame of uh, caddy's pregnancy quentin turns to help and console towards his father but pragmatic mr compson tells him that virginity is invented by men and should not be taken seriously 
he also tells quentin that time will heal all and just leave to the northeast dalton ham is the who's the one or is the reason behind all this next quentin is an he such a fellow intelligent fellow he wanted to prove his father so uh, whatever he thought is wrong but he unable to do so before he leaves for harvard uh, in the fall of uh, 1909 caddy becomes a pregnant attempting to cover up her uh, indiscretions caddy quickly marries herbert hat a banker she met in indiana herbert promises johnson comes on a job in his bank but later Herbert immediately divorces Candy because uh, he knows that she got pregnant with another man's child. Meanwhile, Quentin still mirrored in despair over Candy's sin. He wants to convey his father that whatever he told it, it was wrong and it, it was whatever he thought father thought that is false but he unable to do so. And uh, now Quen, uh, Quentin wants to protect Uh, his uh, sister then she, uh, he took uh, that all the blame on himself so caddis uh, daughter got named uh, mrs quentin uh, then later quentin commits suicide by drowning himself in the charles river just before the end of the of his first year at harvard the compsons disown carry from the family but take in her newborn daughter mrs quentin the task of raising mrs quentin falls squarely on dilsey dilsey's soldiers because uh, dilsey is a servant of the compson um compson mr compson dies of alcoholism roughly a year after quentin's suicide as a, as the oldest surviving son joseph who is a very famous uh, favorite to mrs uh, compson becomes head of the compson household bitterly employed at a uh, menial job in the local firm supply store johnson devises an ingenious uh, schemes to steal the money uh, which carries sends to support mrs quentin's upbringing mrs quentin grows up Uh, to be an unhappy rebellious and promiscuous girl a child constantly in conflict because uh, with her overbearing and a vicious uncle jason uh, is very uh, cruel towards the caddy because uh, she is the one who uh, re- become a reason to lost his job in the bank because uh, her husband uh, offered him Dawson uh, promised him to get a job but he couldn't be possible to get that job so uh, he ill treat the scary and her daughter miss quentin he is a cruel person for them in the present action dawson argue with uh, mrs quentin uh, mrs quentin his boss and his mother and bullies quentin into uh, signing a money order later he chooses a mrs quentin and her lover this is a mrs quentin he or is a uh, daughter of caddy but they eventually leave them stranded miles away from town jason makes his way home torments dilsey and luster dilsey is a servant luster is a uh, son to the dilsey and gets in another argument with quentin over dinner last section begins by following the says as uh, she gets in the household ready on easter day the day after benjie's uh, section jason wakes up to discover that mrs quentin has run away and stolen all his money most of which he himself had stolen from her jason rushes off and dilsey and lester and benjie go to an easter church service meanwhile the police refuses to help jason so he pursues Quentin to another town where he is attacked by an old man and fails to find Mrs Quentin Quentin here daughter of Caddy Meanwhile Lester takes a Benjie on a carriage right but he deviates from the usual course and Benjie starts howling 
Johnson appears and strikes Lester and Benji. Uh, when the Lester returns to the uh, usual path, Benji grows calm, feeling everything is back in order. In the appendix, in the appendix, the end of the novel, Faulkner describes the history of Compson family and their fate after the novel. After the Caroline dies, Johnson sends Benji to an asylum and sells the Compson house. Here later, library, a librarian see a picture, sees a picture of Caddy in a magazine and she brings it to Dilsey. But Dilsey has no desire to save Caddy as she is better, better off away from Jefferson. So, this is the how they are divided and at the end of the appendix, the last line is the endure. This line is attached to the end of the novel. It means there is still hope to make the Kamsun family to get back to a better, a normal life. So, here we have seen many things and part 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't get confused. Benji in the initial I'm just revising because it's a very complicated novel. And uh, let's see. At the part 1, Benji speaks about Carrie's soiled inner wear, her uses perfumes, she loses her, loses her virginity and her wedding. Quentin's suicide in 1910. All this makes him being castrated. And part 2, Quentin's mind. Whatever it's going, the, the this is a caddies get pregnant and she is not able to name the boy because she is involved in promiscuity. And uh, later Quentin's uh, accepted uh, to share these uh, sin, whatever she has done. Uh, in order to protect her sister, he wants to share her part of punishment or her part of sin on him. So later this tortured him and uh, at the end he uh, drowned by himself to make a means uh, he suicide himself. He drowned. In the part third, third the brother Jason who is very ill ill person and very fav uh, favorite to the uh, Mrs. Quint Quentin Compson that is the head of the family. So he focused on present. Mm. Reveals, uh, sorry, Mrs. Compson. So, reveals the Carrie's daughter appears to be heading in the same direction of sexual freedom as her mother does. So, Carrie's daughter, Mrs. Quentin, what uh, also picturized as a, she is also uh, involving, means uh, uh, indulging in the love, sex and all, how the uh, Carrie's, her mother done. So, Carrie's get divorced in the part third and gets a forbidden from her own house this is a all lies in a part three next in part four it's a omniscient narration a authorial point of view Joseph steal seven thousand to dollar but later caddy's daughter has taken um, has taken her some amount uh, from her stores and she just uh, eloped with a boy next is there's a section uh, they will say he is a matriarch, the head of the family, of the black family. She served a lot at the Compton family. They will say attendance at an Easter church service at which a preacher from St. Louis River, Chiango, Chiango that delivers a sermon that stirs and they will say an epiphany of doom for the Compton family. She says, I have seed, D first. And the last, I see the beginning, and now I see the ending. So you have to uh, say now how you feel, view, and uh, observe what all the extra points or extra point you have with you regarding the sound and fury. And at the end, when they say his word, turn completely upside down. As it turns to his normal order, however, he calms down. The novel ends with symbolic completion of the Compson downfall, but also hints at the possibility of resurrection or renewal. Importantly, this last chapter takes place on Easter Day, Sunday. Uh, there's a day of 
Christ's resurrection and those a powerful symbol of redemption and hope so thank you please do subscribe to the channel and please watch our videos which i uploaded to get more information thank you